Dr. Know It All coming to you from the Vancouver airport where it is, um, what is it, 9.15 at night at this point. So anyway, I'm going to try, try to talk relatively quietly here. I didn't know for the next 24 hours when I would have a chance to actually do this video, so I figured I would just go ahead and do it now. So forgive me if there's noise and airport announcements and children. There's a playground over here. By the way, the Vancouver airport, like the city itself, is wonderful, much, much nicer than the Atlanta airport. So Atlanta's got some work to do to catch up with this stuff. So I wanted to, um, I'm actually going to start with this first with a post from Dave Lee and a response from Elon Musk. The post from Dave Lee is actually related to the Walter Isaacson article that I had up at the beginning here, but I'm going to get to reading the important parts. But anyway, Dave talks about the, you know, he's talking about the latching on to the million miles part that I'm going to talk about in a second, but I wanted to give sort of a preview here that Elon responded to this. In addition to neural network training compute, when it comes to video, the scale of data storage and transfer boggles the mind. So an interesting tidbit to add to the conversation as we think about the the article that Walter Isaacson has. And if you're not planning on reading Walter's book, I don't know what you're doing, man. It's, it's going to be worth it. it. Sounds just amazing. So anyway, then we also have this response here. Sawyer Merritt said, some people think Tesla's competitors will reach full autonomy soon after Tesla does. Read this quote from Walter Isaacson's new article and you'll see one reason why it's not likely to happen. Elon latched onto the key fact that the team had discovered the neural network, you know, did, did well only when it had like a million clips. So again, that's the same thing Dave Lee was talking about. Anyway, Elon said, a long tail of training data, reality has a vast number of weird edge cases and it's required to solve full self-driving well. So the problem, you know, versus a game like chess or Go or anything else basically is that reality is way, way, way too complicated and too messy and that's the issue. And then of course he says, and it craves the amount of training compute which is currently our primary constraint. So there are many, many factors involved in trying to solve full self-driving and it's very, the compute intensity, the data intensity, all of that stuff is sort of a, just something to keep in mind as we look at this article. So anyway, let's go and take a look at this. So I've got some highlighted stuff. I will leave, of course, a link to this in the description so you can check it out entirely. I'm not going to read through a bunch of stuff that I'm sure you all already know about. Sorry about the kids crying. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start here. The new version, so this is the August, uh, I think it was August, what was the date? August late August, I don't know, I think it was a 23rd or 26th or something like that, anyway. But, so this is related to him driving this, and he said the new version he was using, Full Self Driving 12, was based on a radical new concept that he believes will not only transform autonomous vehicles, but also be a quantum leap towards artificial general intelligence that can operate in physical real world situations. Instead of being based on hundreds of thousands of lines of code, like all previous versions of Full Self Driving software, this new system had taught itself how to drive by processing billions of frames of data of how humans do it, just like the new large language model chatbots train themselves to generate answers by processing billions of words of human text. So that's the, you know, sort of TLDR, and I've done a bunch of videos on that stuff. <laughs> I'll leave a link to that up here. I need to make a playlist at this point. I think I will. I'll probably leave a link to the playlist. Anyway, so there's a lot of things that I've done on this already, and I don't want to spend too much time because there's new information here that I want to talk about more. Amazingly, and here's the, where we start into the interesting stuff, amazingly, Musk had set on this fundamentally new approach just eight months earlier, so late 2022, early 2023. Pretty crazy. Uh, so we, we start with a quote here from December, I believe, yes, in the December meeting. So it's like ChatGPT, but for cars, Deval Shroff, a young member of Tesla's autopilot team, explained to Musk in a meeting in December. He was comparing the idea they were working on to the chatbot that had just been released by OpenAI. And if you recall, this is December. We're talking about, like, it was just before Thanksgiving that uh, the chat GPT was released. So this is brand new stuff that everyone's talking about. And you've got Tesla immediately jumping on this. I, I love the Tesla AI team and how bold and enthusiastic they are. So anyway, we're talking about just like less than a month later that they're talking about this. And Deval, I believe I met Deval last year at the AI Day 2 thing, and if so, <laughs> it was great to meet you. I think I did. I met a lot of people, and it's hard to remember exactly, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that I did meet you. So anyway, it was wonderful talking to you and, of course, everybody else that was working there. Anyway, um, the OpenAI must co founded all that stuff. Quote, we process an enormous amount of data on how real human drivers acted in a complex driving situation, said Shroff, and then we train a computer, computer's neural network to mimic that. In other words, just like you would teach a human being. And there's Deval, so there you go. <laughs> Get a nice picture, so howdy, howdy. Hopefully he's watching. I, apparently some people from Tesla AI actually do watch this channel, so, so anyway, I hope you do. So I'm gonna skip a, a bunch of stuff here. Anyway, 
Shroff goes on to talk about, instead of determining the proper path of the car based on rules, we determine the car's proper path by relying on a neural network that learns from millions of examples of what humans have done. In other words, it's human imitation. Faced with a situation, the neural network chooses a path based on what humans have done in thousands of similar situations. It's like the ways humans learn to speak and drive and play chess and eat spaghetti and do almost everything else. We might be given a set of rules to follow, but mainly we pick up the skills by observing how other people do it. And I will also add to this, people don't give this enough credence, but doing it yourself. And so of course the car gets to do this in simulation and then in real life as well when it gets close, but it gets to you know, you learn a lot of the stuff that you do as a human being by doing it yourself. So it's not just watching other people, but it's learning yourself. And of course, the car by the neural network inputs and outputs is learning a great deal. And it's more experiential than a human just watching somebody else do it. But there still is the aspect of uh, a human being, or I'm sorry, the neural network actually going and doing it and running it in simulation and then in reality and learning even more. Anyway, it was the approach to machine learning envisioned by Alan Turing in his 1950 paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. And I believe that was the one that had the, the that came up with the idea of the imitation game. I, if I'm remembering correctly, that was the article. So anyway, I'm titling this video the imitation game because it makes perfect sense. Anyway, and which exploded into public view. In other words, this approach a year ago with the release of ChatGPT. In fact, it's less than a year ago at this point, which is just crazy to think about. By early 2023, the Neural Network Planner project had analyzed 10 million clips of video collected from the cars te of co Tesla customers. Did that mean it would merely be as good as the average human driver? No, because we only use data from humans when they handle the situation well, Shroff explained. So this is the kind of situation where, again, I've talked about this pre previously, but I believe that Tesla actually uses the... the grading system that they have for full self-driving uh, that they used to use to allow people to get full self-driving and that they still use for their insurance purposes, I believe that they use that as a way to curate good human drivers. So anyway, well-curated data, Elon has even said this and mentioned this before, and a lot of people have talked about this in terms of LLMs, that well-curated data is worth way, way more than a bunch of average data. So if you have 10% as much, but it's really well-curated data, it's worth a 10 times that much uh, mediocre data because you don't want to feed something. You don't want to teach it bad driving, basically, or bad language either way. So anyway, human labor labelers, many of them based in Buffalo, New York, assessed the videos and gave them grades. Musk told them to look for things a five-star Uber driver would do, which makes really good sense that he called it a five-star Uber drive at the end of his drive. And those were the videos used to train the computer. Musk regularly walked through the autopilot workspace in Palo Alto and knelt next to the engineers for impromptu discussions. As he studied the new human imitation approach, he had a question. Was it truly needed? Might it be a bit overkill? And those are interesting questions. It's valid. One of his maxims is that you should never use a cruise missile to kill a fly. Just use a fly swatter. Was using a neural network unnecessarily complicated? And I'll talk about this more later at a different time when things are a little bit calmer and you know there's not people wandering around and stuff like that behind me. But but neural networks are the architectural aspect of them is is significantly complicated, and so there is a rationale to say is does it make more sense to use software 1.0? Does it make more sense to use you know human heuristic code rather than the neural networks? The answer I believe in this case is no. Obviously, I think we're seeing the results of that. But anyway, it is a valid question to ask that question. Anyway. Schroff showed Musk instances where a neural network planner would work better than a rules-based approach. The demo had a road littered with trash cans, fallen traffic cones, and random debris. I assume this is in simulation. A car guided by the neural network planner was able to skitter around the obstacles, crossing the lane lines, and breaking some rules as necessary. And that's a really important part. A lot of times human drivers you gotta get a little creative and break the rules a little bit. Here's what happens when we move from rules-based to network path-based, Shroff told him. The car will never get into a collision if you turn this thing on, even in unstructured environments. In other words, things that are not following normal rules. Skipping down a little bit more. Musk, who liked to manage by decreeing what metrics should be paramount, gave them their lodestar, the number of miles that cars with full self-driving were able to travel without a human intervening. And I don't know, Isaacson doesn't mention whether this is for version 12 or version 11.4. whatever. I think it's probably for version 12. But anyway, I, I don't know. It could be for the current version that we're all driving too. Anyway, I want the latest data on miles per intervention to be the starting slide at each of our meetings, he decreed. He told them to make it like a video game where they could see their score every day. Video games without a score are boring, which is true. So it will be motivating to watch each day as the miles per intervention increases. So that's a, it's a very cool thing and a good motivating factor. They also put a gong near their desks and whenever they successfully solved a problem caused, causing an intervention, they got to bang the gong. So there you go. By mid-April 2020, 
2023, so just a few months ago at this point, it was time for Musk to try the new neural network planner. When the car turned onto the main road, in other words, the beginning of an actual drive here as opposed to a simulation, the first scary challenge arose. A cyclist was heading their way. On its own, the car yielded just as a human would have done. For 25 minutes, the car drove on fast roads and neighborhood streets, handling complex turns and avoiding cyclists, pedestrians, and pets. Much, Musk never touched the wheel. Only a couple of times did he intervene by tapping the accelerator when he thought the car was being overly cautious, which I do too, honestly, and I know I'm driving 11.4.7, but anyway. Such as when it was too differential, deferential at a four-way stop sign. At one point, the car conducted a maneuver that Elon thought was better than he would have done. Oh, wow, he said. Even my human neural network failed here, but the car did the right thing. He was so pleased that he started whistling Mozart's uh, Eine Kleine Nacht music serenade in G major. So anyway, that's very cool. He's a, obviously a classical music fan, so am I, so that's awesome. I love that. I heard him when he was doing the drive around with a shark. He was mostly listening to classical music then, too. Anyway, they then had a meeting where 20 guys, all in black t-shirts, sat around a conference table to hear the verdict. Many had not believed that the neural network, and this is neural network only, they'd already had neural networks in the system before, but anyway, the neural network only project would work. Musk declared that he was now a believer and they should move their resources to push it forward. And I will take a moment here to say that that is probably one of the reasons why we've seen such a extreme slowdown in the number of iterations of 11.4.x recently, and you know, since April time frame, because that's the time when they're just like, nope, it's not worth putting any more effort into 11 dot whatever because we're going to version 12 so anyway that's that's very cool to see that during the discussion musk latched on to a key fact this is the part that gets back to the tweets at the beginning the team had discovered the neural network did not work well until it had been trained on at least a million video clips and that's per like incident. This gave Tesla a big advantage over other car and AI companies. It had a fleet of almost 2 million Teslas around the world and growing every day, uh, collecting video clips every day. We are uniquely positioned to do this, Eloswami said at the meeting. Four months later, the new system was ready to replace the old approach and become the basis for full self-driving, which Tesla plans to release as soon as regulators approve it, which is really interesting. I did not know that. I don't know if they're awaiting that at this point that's that's really this is a, quite a quite a piece of information that i did not know about but anyway um it, it, apparently they might be just like spacex is waiting for uh, the faa approval to be able to do their next launch it might be that full self-driving 12 is just waiting on nitsa to up, give it the thumbs up and say that it's okay to release this to the public and this is an interesting last little piece here. There is still one problem to overcome. Human drivers, even the best, usually fudge traffic rules, which is very, very true. And the new full self-driving by design imitates what humans do. For example, more than 95% of humans, and I will correct Walter here, it is 99.5% of humans. That's what Ashok said. So he said only 0.5% of people, human drivers, actually stop at stop signs. So, so it's actually 99.5%. Anyway, of humans creep slowly through stop signs rather than coming to a complete stop. The chief of the National Highway Safety Board, or I guess that it should be National Sci Highway Safety Association, I believe it should be NHTSA, says that the agency is currently studying whether that should be permissible for self-driving cars as well. I am very much hoping that they determine that it is because that means that Tesla will be able to imitate better drivers who don't stop at stop signs all the time. So we will see what happens with that. Anyway, I, this is really fascinating stuff. A lot of this is sort of the human interest aspect of it, but the big takeaway for me is that all of this has happened in a very, very short amount of time. And remember, I keep saying that one of Elon's major superpowers is that he is not subject to the sunk cost fallacy. In other words, they've devoted all of these resources to going down this road and this sort of architecture and this sort of software 1.0, software 2.0, Know, hybrid way of doing things and he sees it and he's like prove it to me and as soon as they prove it to him he's like yeah we're going with this we're just screw the old way of doing it so really really fascinating how he's just just willing to throw this stuff away and also just how fast this has happened I have also heard from other sources that it took them about four months to do the training for full self-driving 12 and I that's probably multiple iterations and things like that but that is a vast amount of time that they had to work on the training to get this all to work which of of course explains why Tesla is so compute bound at this point and why they have this new H100 cluster that's come online and why they're working towards 100 exaflops in the next year by the end of 2024 if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, so a lot of pieces of the puzzle, a lot of speed is happening here. Anyway, you've got it's pretty incredible stuff that they've got going on here and I hope you all agree with that and definitely let me know in the comments what you think and 
you know, we'll, we'll have to keep our eyes open and we'll have to see if indeed Elon is correct when he says that full self-driving 12 will not be beta anymore. Maybe that's what they're waiting for is the uh, <laughs> is this approval that they will have to be able to operate this as a full self-driving without the steering wheel nag as a, you know, fully autonomous software under certain circumstances. So anyway, we will see what happens. I, for one, can't wait to find out what happens and I hope you all can too. In the meantime, please do like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And of course, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.